You are looking at production chain for 22.5 heavy modular frames per minute. Making this factory was the groundbreaking moment for the way I see and play Satisfactory. There are four factories, and each of them is built from a singular blueprint. First factory produce 45 reinforced iron plates per minute. Second factory convert this into 67.5 modular frames. Then there is the side factory producing 540 concrete per minute. And the chunky boy is 22.5 heavy modular frames per minute that expands on previous three factories. Smaller factories are made with one mirrored blueprint with no internal connections. Only raw resources are connected to the both sides. And even the bigger one is still one single blueprint stacked 8 times. The first factory in the production chain have changed the way I see and play Satisfactory. Now I am on a crusade to condense every production chain down to the blueprint size chunks. And this forced me to meet incredible optimization goals. My factories now use half the energy, several times less machines and way less resources. The reinforced iron plate factory is not only the basis for heavy modular frames, but the basis for computer or crystal oscillator production and production of smart plating and versatile framework. I find myself plopping this factory quite often. While I would be providing blueprints itself, nevertheless it is only the tip of an iceberg. I have already around 15 blueprints for the factories in this style. This includes rotor, stator, motor, computer, radio control unit and even supercomputer production. I also have complete factories for personal storage, including every iron item, steel item, electronics and even bio waste processor. So it is important to explain driving principle behind these factories before I share them all. I would explain benefits of certain alternative recipes and would also share production schematics. If this factory is not your jam, you still can apply this knowledge to your own personal factories. Usual way for a satisfactory beginner is just to jam with things you unlock and very soon you end up with spaghetti on top of lasagna and hey hey your power just went out. Next step is to plant things just a tiny bit, but often you start to overproduce your lower tier items just in case for the future expansion. Or you find yourself in an alternative situation when you're constantly trying to catch up for your higher tier factories and creating those extra lower tier factories all the time. This often leads to the final level where you just smelt everything you see and ask questions later. You plop like 400 refineries for the pure copper ingots, your elbow hurts and you will never use them. But if we stop at middle ground and limit ourselves with 4x4 footprint, this is where the gold happens. Here is a full production chain for 22.5 heavy modular frames with standard recipes. Factory like this will just take up half of Dune Desert and 200 screw related constructors. Yeah, good luck with that. Even if you create blueprint for the screw production itself, it's still over the top. Raw resource consumption is enormous and power draw is two times higher than the factory showcase at the start of the video. To reduce this factory sprawl, the key four recipes are steel screws, bolted iron plate, sealed frame and heavy encased frame. These four recipes reduce screw production from 200 plus constructors down to four constructors. Yes, from 200 plus to four. This is ridiculous. Not only you save on space, but you save enormous amount of energy this way. And amount of assemblers also go drastically down, saving even more energy and space. Next step is to reduce raw resource input and alternative recipes is once again quite helpful. Long story short, with foundry setups replacing our smelters, we can reduce iron input from 5.5k down to 700 iron plus 700 copper and coal intake is also reduced by 1000 units. And while on paper foundries use more energy than smelters, in reality, that extra 4k iron need to be extracted with miners and this also eats up extra energy. And by the way, with foundry approach, you just got yourself 1k extra coal for coal generators. There is an argument to be made about copper use. But copper is the first most abundant resource on the map and unless if you want to smelt everything, it is not an issue. An approach here is about reducing overproduction that usually grows from the smelt everything approach. Now, with overarching picture clear, we can go to the lowest level of production chain and see how it fits into the singular blueprint. Today I want to focus on the first two factories and they actually pair quite nicely with each other and quite similar in nature. 
The great question here would be why I am producing 45 reinforced iron plates and 67.5 module frames instead of something like 40 plus 60 for use in 22.5 heavy module frames later. And this is tied to other production chains. Number 45 jams nicely with motor, computer, smart plating and versatile framework production. Both reinforced iron plates and module frame factories need just under 270 iron and 270 copper for the two factories. This alone saves a lot of external hassle thanks to the throughput of Mark III belt at 270 items per minute. So connecting those two factories is very easy and very straightforward. Just make Mark III belt dead end and if you have excess resource on the belt, you can add AI limiter with overflow valve. This makes it way easier to expand later when you arrive at Mark IV and Mark V belts with Mark III miners. And here is the full layout for production of 45 reinforced iron plates per minute. Whatever you do, this will not fit into the single blueprint. Initially my idea was to make A and B blueprints with internal connections, but making 10 plus connections for the belt and power on three floors, yeah, it's quite confusing especially if I want to share this with other people. Later I saw potential of mirroring blueprints with the first iteration of Heavy Model Frame Factory, and this iteration was still using two blueprints instead of one, and the second step was this iteration of Modular Frame Factory. Here all machines were mirrored into the two separate production chains, but I was still doing this two blueprint setup with decorative cover for the Modular Frame Factory. Once the idea was there, it was only the matter of time before I have done mirrorable... Mirrorable? Is it even a bird? <laughs> English fail. Uh, Alright, so when they are mirrored, they are a single blueprint. That's it. And the elephant in the room here is reinforced iron plate factory with free assemblers and free screw constructors. You know, there is like arithmetica pupkina's kartinkami where free does not divide equally. I do the most reasonable thing when I have the space and just use four machines instead of three. This way I can set up full factory without extra internal connections. Yes, amount of external connection doubles. And yes, it is technically two separate production lines or two separate factories. But this is an opportunity instead of a hustle. For example, you can start your production chain at only 50% capacity before constructing the full factories. Or you can combine half of reinforced iron plate factory with half of module frame factory and still have finished look for your building. Next thing is to make connection as convenient as possible. And when I plop half a dozen factories, the last thing that I want is to clog up my factory and then disassemble everything. Then I have like a bunch of suitcases levitating in there. Yeah, not a pretty picture. So I go an extra kilometer. I make a separated room where all my connections are made and label each input and output. I usually prefer to feed my factories from beneath. For this I tend to construct like 8 meter high foundations or sandwich flare as people usually call it. Then I put the holes where my outlets are and feed everything from beneath. Usually I connect copper and iron first since if you are using foundries and alloys you can use either of two belts, it doesn't matter, you can mismatch them. Then I connect coal and output and the beauty of this is like in the versatility of the gameplay. You can go from like full alpha male spaghetti with bread sauce to pour salmon tagliatelle, uh, the choice is yours. If you look at the whole thing on the macro level, you can treat my blueprints as a singular machines, you just input ore and output your production lines. And another neat thing is just to label exterior of my factory with production information, quite nice detail and while it is easy to remember where everything goes at first, one year later you load up satisfactory, look at your factory sprawl constructed in like several hundred hours, have no idea what goes where, what you were thinking about a year ago and just press restart. So with the signs like this, it's just very easy to remember and pick up your old saves. Another interesting option with blueprint factories is that it's easy to separate them from the main power grid. And this allows to turn on and off the whole production chains. For the power I leave the option to connect factory both from exterior and from below. Also blueprints are in this bizarre space where you do not need alternative recipe or ticket unlock to place blueprint itself. And this is limited by the fact that you need to manually transfer blueprints from safe to safe. So you cannot do it inside of the game, you need to go for your like file explorer, so you need to go to your system disk, users, your username, app data, local, factory game, saves, save games, blueprints. 
and here you will have session folders, but they will be only created once you have blueprints unlocked in your progression and have created the first blueprint. So just unlock your blueprints, create the first dot blueprint, and then you have the folder where you can place all your blueprints from other saves. Every single blueprint consists from two parts, .sbp file with actual parts and items, and .sbp file with CFG addition where you just have text description and color settings. I tend to label inputs and outputs in my description and also well I have the custom exterior with custom colors. So yeah, both files are equally important if you want to have full experience. As mentioned previously, I use a bit more machines than necessary for reinforced iron plate factory. And if you do not underclock machines, you will get bigger output if more resources are available. While you can adjust every single machine to exact ratios, this does not really work. Or work in very, very prolonged runtimes, for example, like 10 hours. It will only work if you load balance in your factory, and majority of blueprints end up as manifolds due to, well, space limitations. This is why I only set exact ratios for my final machines, and only final machines. In this case, all four reinforced iron plate assemblers are at 75%. This way, Factory will try to draw a bit more resources at first and overproduce lower tier items before the full production line saturation. Once saturation is achieved, you end up with 100% production rate for the final item and resource draw normalized to specified input numbers. This is a really nice way to control efficiency when you deal with manifolds and multiple factories. And speaking about efficiency, for majority of my blueprints I prefer to use iron alloy that require copper. And this is not only safe energy, but foundries in general take up less space, which is crucial for blueprints. For this factory I wanted a bit more flexibility and opted to have Mark II version with iron-only input. If you play in Dune Desert or any other certain area, finding copper is usually not an issue, but in some places it can be tricky or I'm just too lazy to do that. And iron-only version use up to 450 iron total. Uh, obviously it is divided by two with two sides and it can be still handled with Mark III belts with two miners. Or you can go full on like Mark IV belts into one single manifold for the resources. The choice is yours. Speaking of belt saturation and second factory, just like the first one, the reinforced iron plate factory, it have two versions, one with the foundries for the copper and iron inputs, and the another one just iron-only version with smelters. And here are production schematics for module frame factory. The main champion of this factory is steel frame alternative recipe. It reduces the amount of assemblers and constructors necessary for the same output and standard module frame recipe well, it's just incredibly inefficient. Standard module frame recipe will require whopping 90 reinforced iron plates per minute. This is on top of an incompatible amount of machinery for the actual module frame factory. And yeah, just use the alternative recipe. And you can notice that the amount of assemblers is still quite high. And this is even with the alternative recipe. And you cannot really fit so many with three floors. This is one of the rare occasions where I just overclock my factory. There are a total of six assemblers and every single one of them is overclocked. There are just five assemblers at 200% and one at 125%. On the first level I run all of my smelting with the foundries, then I do the manifold for the steel ingots, and the second and third floors are steel pipe constructors load balanced into the assemblers. Each constructor fit directly into the assembler, constructors produce 20 steel pipes per minute with 100% load, and this is the exact amount for steel frame assembler at 200% load. Just like with reinforced iron plates, I have made a Mark II version with module frame factory that can run only on iron and coal, and in the pinned comment I would provide zip file on my Google Drive with all 8 files for 4 blueprints. I also would post them onto one of the community sites for the blueprints, but I'm not sure about functionality since people reported crashes with my previous video and the previous blueprint. Blueprints are done in update 8 experimental and this is maybe the case, I don't actually know. Uh, if you know for sure, just leave the comment down below, very appreciated for that. We have covered all the alternative recipes crucial for these blueprints and most importantly the way I split and handle manifolds for 100% efficiency. Next time around I would explore the concrete and heavy module frame factories and until that time, have a nice one and Yakis out. <laughs>